Ladies and gentlemen, friends, the Rose Troop is very happy to present a midsummer night's dream called Marks My Word. In the very beginning, we'll ask you to switch off one thing only, that is your mobile phone. Kindly switch it off and please switch on everything else. Your eyes, your ears, your hearts, your dreams, your frustrations, your worries, your hopes. Switch them all off. This play is based on an original concept of Salman Khoshi and written by Atar Khan. It is a play of one act divided into three scenes. The first and third scenes take place today in the home of uh, Sri Amit Kumar, who just happens to be a leading Congress politician. Scene two, which of course occurs between scene one and scene three, takes place in 1980 in the Oxford Dates of Sri Amit Kumar. Obviously, much before he became a leading Congress politician. So ladies and gentlemen, we present a play which is dedicated to the dream that was and is and always will be Ladies and gentlemen, marks my word. I so jayenge Raja Rank Fakir Ik Singhasan Chadhi Chale लंदन भैया कहीं इस गाने में इस घर का तो जिक्र नहीं है हुजूर इस गाने में सिर्फ इस घर का ही जिक्र हो रहा है <laughs> साहब दिस इंग्लिश जेंटलमैन यू आर सो एंशियसली वेटिंग फॉर इज ही गोइंग टू बी ऑफ एनी यूज दैट यू हैव कैंसलड योर मीटिंग विद द प्राइम मिनिस्टर फॉर्मर प्राइम मिनिस्टर ओ आई एम सॉरी फॉर्मर प्राइम मिनिस्टर and you kept three tv crews waiting outside sir who is he call him yeah let us say he's different i used to know him in oxford he's a friend of india i can't wait to discover to whether he's changed or not sir in politics you should not waste even a single minute mm. on a person who is not of political use is he going to be late Tell me, sir, is he so important? He is someone from a pleasant past, Mia. Oh, Saab, we don't need past. We need future. <laughs> is he going to be late? How long will he be staying? Hey, Saab, take it, Saab. 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 Hey, Khamosh, 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 Saab. ये शैतान बच्चे एट द ट्रैफिक सिग्नल दे शुड बी सेंट टू अ यू नो बेगर्स होम अरे लंदन मिया डोंट बी सो हार्श दोस पर चिल्ड्रन आर द रेचेड ऑफ द इयर्स रेचेड सताए हुए व्हाट दे आर अ रिमाइंडर ऑफ आवर फेलियर्स जस्ट टू गेट अ स्मॉल मील दे सेल दीस हॉरिबल चाइनीज मेड टॉयज टू बिग पीपल इन फैंसी कार्स दैट ऑलमोस्ट नेवर स्टॉप they are a reality check for india we must not brush them under the carpet carpet what carpet dari e sa mera naam kachhi mera khamosh khamosh and what sataye hue sir sir you tell so many things that go over my head i don't understand anything <laughs> what what was i saying oh yes Sir, you must focus your mind on next election. Mm. 
हम हार गए हैं साहब हम हार गए हैं टाइम्स आर वेरी डिफिकल्ट एंड नाउ यू मस्ट विन दिस जंटन एंड विल बी ऑफ एनी यूज इन नेक्स्ट इलेक्शन वाह लट इंडिया your insights are getting sharper and your questions are very pertinent but right now if you close your eyes and count to 3 very slowly the doorbell will ring and our guest will arrive on the dot at 11 are you ready close your eyes very good now count with me 1 1 to 2 नमस्ते <laughs> Sir, welcome, sir. Welcome. Please come right in. I am Major Domo. Ma- Major Domo. Domo. <laughs> of Minister Amit Kumar Ji. Former Minister. Oh, I am sorry, former <laughs> Minister. Sir, Minister is waiting for you with great joy. Yes. How are you? I am fine. I am fine. How you do? How I do? आ, मैं भी बिल्कुल ठीक हूं शुक्रिया वी शुड गो द मिनिस्टर इज वेटिंग फॉर अस ओह यस सर फॉर्मर मिनिस्टर पहले आप पहले आप पहले नहीं नहीं सर आई विल कम इन योर बैक साइड सर इफ यू विश आई मीन टू वेट यू फाइंड देम ही इज एब्सोल्युटली मार्वेलस कम हियर ओह ऑल आर टू वेलकम यू टू माय मॉडेस्ट होम नो सर Have you forgotten our Oxford way so soon? It is Jim, only Jim. I still have that cultural hesitation, and I've been back home too long. But all right, Jim it is, and of course, Amit, not Minister. Amit, come here once again. Oh, oh, oh. Look at you, as dashing as ever. And listen, I have brought you. little piece of modern india for you uh, to signify our rendezvous but <clears throat> do not open it now open it only after i've left i guarantee that you will not be disappointed <laughs> shukriya very kind nawasish nazare naya pe aapki you know but, but look at you you don't look a day old uh, well, maybe mean, think, two uh, days old <laughs> uh, i think uh, it was 30 years since we 35, last uh, 35 oh, 35 god 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 yes the body cannot cannot often cope up with the spirit but uh, look at you you're absolutely fantastic um मैं क्या कह रहा था मैं आपसे कुछ कह रहा था नहीं आप ही मैं आपसे मैं आपसे क्या कह रहा मैंने कहा द बॉडी कैन नॉट कीप अप द स्पिरिट ऑफ कोर्स बट लुक एट यू एज यंग एंड डैशिंग एज एवर दिस रिमाइंड्स मी ऑफ दैट ओल्ड ओह यस ऑफ कोर्स दैट कपलेट द कपलेट यूज्ड टू ऑलवेज कोट इट ऑक्सफोर्ड अब डोंट रिमाइंड मी समथिंग अबाउट अ वैनिशिंग यूथ अम आ जवानी भी गई सीमा फसल गुल खुशानी भी मैं अब तादेल महफिल में गजल खान हो नहीं सकता नवाजिश नवाजिश लेकिन अमित योर इंग्लिश वॉज ऑलवेज मच बेटर देन माइंड आई कुड यू ट्राई टू ट्रांसलेट इट माई यूथ इज gone and so has the season of the scattering of the flowers oh, oh, and uh, not much longer will i be able to stay in this festival of life as um, and reciting gazals beautiful beautiful yes. not oh, easy. Oh. <laughs> your youth is far from gone alice is that you is that really you <laughs> the only if i used to know <laughs>
Why on earth could you not call or drop by? Didn't see you at any Oxbridge event either. I didn't come all the way to India to yearn for Oxford. Besides, activists like to keep their autonomy and anonymity. Oh, say that again, say that again. Autonomy and anonymity. <laughs> but here I am now. Splendid. I am glad that Jim did not bring you gift wrapped in paper for me to open later. Well, you wouldn't have been disappointed. <laughs> but look at you, Amit. As handsome as ever. And presumably still a prude. Prude? A prude. <laughs> you know, you were the only Indian student at Oxford who didn't chase me. Ooh. And I can tell you now, you were also the only Indian student I wanted to chase. Oh, oh missed opportunities. Alas, if only I'd known missed opportunities. Familiar criticism one year. Well, it's, it's never too late, I mean, to make up for missed opportunities. <laughs> you mean to derail my career? But what a joy it is to see the both of you. Amazing. Oh, please, sit down, make yourselves comfortable. Ladder me, I am a guru. Athura, thodi chai and scones. Samosas, samosas. Ah, ठीक है. Scones, chai or samosas. Please, please. So, professor, I see that you still relish samosas. We have some new varieties. But you'll realize that my favorites are keema samosas. I was introduced to them by uh, Maulana Azad himself when I was a very young research scholar. <laughs> keema samosas, an Indian modern history. The two only lasting loves of your life. Last, uh, lasting, lasting one and the same. <laughs> but you know, you're absolutely right. For me, they're like teri aankhe wo fafaz. Teri aankhon ke siwa. Dunya mein rakha kya? Wah! Nawazish, nawazish. Yes, well, um, we were saying that, uh, oh yes, um, samosas. Samosas are my favorites, absolutely. And nawazish, uh, nawazish, nawazish. Uh, you were saying, um, mm, Old age. हम क्या बोल रहे थे क्या कह रहे थे सीमा आह सीमा हाँ फसले बोल फुशानी गई 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 but I I I think you know I I would be interested to know what brings you to India कीमत समोसा with you and this lovely lady no to be more serious um as they say मजाक बर्तरा मजाक बर्तरा I've come here to Find a, a holy grail. I'm in search of a very special answer to a question, a question that we kept on asking a long time ago in in Oxford. And uh, tell me, is the Nehru legacy really in danger? Nehru, Nehru. Perhaps he finally thought of looking for me. Men get romantic in old age. <laughs> well, we all have our expectations, even in old age. <laughs> But a myth. You would make a good substitute for Nehru. And much more handsome. Oh. Elise, I see that your view of the men of the species has not changed over the years. The truth is eternal. Oh, like your beauty. And harsh. Like mine. <laughs> now, what happened to those Kima samosas? Don't tell me, I hear. I hope about the chia. I hope my humble offerings satiate your expectations. Wow, wow! Umidon se bhi wala kar. Wow, wow, wow! Inne kaiye. Hmm. I'm on a diet. Oh, French woman, you know. But shukriya. Oh, welcome. Wow. Bahut ko, bahut ko, bahut ko. Now, bahut bahut shukriya. Now, I want you two to listen to me. As you never did to any of my lectures, but I fell Oxford. But professor, have you noticed what samosas these are? Kima samosas, of course. <laughs> I'm so happy you remember that they're my favorite. I have a world samosa map. A what? A world samosa map, and the capital of it is you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but do do tell us, professor. I mean, I don't believe that you've just come to India just to see. You know me, me too well, my friend. You know me too well. Wow. Orica. Hmm. No. Yes, I was saying. I want you two to listen to me, as you never listened to any of my lectures at Oxford. 
Now, do you remember that lovely midsummer night's evening about uh, 35 years ago at your digs in Oxford? We gathered together to discuss India and the future of Indian politics. You remember that evening, of course. And the uh, most animated argument was about Rajiv Gandhi's imminent entry into those very Indian politics. Of course, how could I forget? It was an evening that changed my life. <laughs> changed your life? One evening did what six years at Oxford were supposed to? <laughs> yes, because uh, beyond the comforts of Oxford, for the first time, it made me seriously think about the future, my own future and the future of my country. Both seemed so far away then, and to think, well, not that far. Absolutely. Now, do you remember the people who were there that evening? Of course, everyone. And the entire conversation, every word of it, it's as if that evening was etched in my memory forever. Mm -hmm. There was... Um, Me? I. I. Always a professor, always a professor. <laughs> I. I. And there was I. Indeed. And oh, what an intervention you made. You put us uh, argumentative Indians all to shame. Was I that bad? <laughs> No, you were that true. And uh, there was huh? uh, Sunita Kumar. Yes, Sunita Kumar. Mm. Though uh, she was from Cambridge, not Oxford, but never the Never the Never the yes, 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 never yes. And uh, her fiance, Prem Prakash. Mm. Uh, he was doing his defil. Uh, in modern Indian history at Oxford. And he was a Rhodes Scholar to boot? Yeah, but Sunita was no less bright. She was doing a PhD in Agricultural Economics and Modern History, a formidable combination. Mm. And it was her letter that precipitated uh, that gathering that evening and the discussion. Yes, sir. Rather strong leftist misgivings about Rajiv Gandhi entering Indian politics. Precisely. <laughs> and of course, you being you, you answered her letter with a letter of your own. My, I was reckless and daring in those days. Oh, yes, you were. Mm. But tell us, Sunita and Prem, where are they now? Well, uh, they had both done rather well for themselves. Uh, Sunita taught economics at Delhi University, and she was very highly regarded in her field. Prem, surprisingly, <coughs> became a civil servant. Oh, both of them kept their leftist leanings very close to the chest. But ultimately, they did blaze a part of revolution somewhere amongst the forest dwellers. I admit, mean, you've always had this wonderful way with words. <laughs> words, words, and no substance. Hence, I'm a politician. Oh, aren't you being harsh with yourself? Have I melted an activist's heart? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> but, but, you know, I mean, uh, I don't think I'm being really too harsh because if you think back to what we were then, our dreams, our ideals, politics does all that in its daily cut and thrust. Yes, absolutely. And then there was a, a Rajiv Ranjan Jha, have I pronounced his name correctly? Mm. He was a politician, but after a stint in journalism, and he, of course, is from the opposite camp. <laughs> Jha, would be Nawab from Bihar. Father, Chief Justice of the High Court, missionary school in the missionary boarding school in the hills, and later Christian College in Delhi, and now spouts venom on TV against the very people who educated him. But I, I, I don't think he was communal at heart. I think he was just willing to play the communal card for votes. Mm, positive cynicism, positive cynicism. Always your strong point. Thank you. I cannot be discourteous about a fellow Oxonian. We still meet sometimes at political events. Um, we even played cricket together once, uh, but we seldom get to talk about Oxford. <gasps> and John Samuel, oh. not, not to be forgotten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You are not going to believe this. The other day I saw someone, I thought was a beggar, mm. near Ajebawan. Ajoy Bawan. Then he suddenly called out my name, I looked closer, and it was John. Oh. Either stoned or drunk, but very happy. <laughs> he ordered tea for me and quoted at length from Marx and Lenin, <laughs> and then suddenly asked whether I was married or not. Ooh. Then I realized it was time for me to leave. Yes. But what a waste. 
What a waste of a talent. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I mean, yes, he had talent. He could write uh, communist manifestos who could turn even a devout capitalist like you into a communist. But, you know, I, I had a feeling that he never really wanted to do anything. He just wanted to, to be. <laughs> and with an uncle as vice chancellor and father as a professor, he never made it academically. Mm. You know, every now and then he comes to see me for a cup of tea and a cigar I keep by for him. And samosa. He <laughs> samosa. <laughs> you know, his knowledge is amazing. But somehow he cannot be persuaded to write anymore. Uh, and what about the other young South Indian chap who hung around with him? What's his name? Ah, Bobby. Uh, Bobby was, you know, Anuj. He used to spell it, spell it with a Y. A most mm. unique young man. Whatever happened to him? Well, you have to hand it to him. He went underground. Who else? Who else? Who else? Uh, Aftab. Oh, Aftab, yes. The most elegant of all of you. Sorry, Amit, but facts are facts. And figures are figures. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, no arguments there. Aftab Alam, we used to call him. Light of the world. He lit up our uh, Oxford gatherings. He should have been a diplomat. He is now Secretary General of India's leading industrialist <laughs> consortium. We still beat. He's still charming. Oh. <laughs> and who is, oh, Alice, do you know what this remarkable woman has done? She started a chain of schools for physically challenged children. Yes, in France. And we have a sister school here in Ariana. It's one of the reasons I've been coming to India, to India often <coughs> for many years. <clears throat> so I, too, have been following your career. Ah. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh. And you too, <laughs> before you ask about Monody. Uh, well, as you know, after Oxford, he married to a Bengali girl. Ooh. And he's still happily married. Mm. I married to an Englishman, wonderful, but being French, you know, being volatile, I'm no longer happily married. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> and if you want to know, Monody and I are still writing each other very long letters. Oh. But on email now, oh. That's, but not on Facebook. <laughs> Bon. Any more questions? Uh, uh, no, no, no more questions. <laughs> Shall we go back to that yes, evening? Yes, yes, let's go back to that magical evening again, that evening when questions were asked and answers were questioned. I can feel again that same spirit, that same mood uh, with, the, with all of you. Rote hue, rote What are you doing? It's not a guzzle, it's like a Bollywood song, okay? So sing it like that. Okay, okay. Come on, let's start again. Oh. After, will you stop it? Okay, you're not singing anymore. Okay. Thank you. Okay, let's sing. Why are you not singing with us, huh? Come on, guys. Padra Babi. Mohanlal will not do. Mohanlal will not do, man. Mr. Bachchan is not good enough for you. Come on, guys. Come on, John. Okay, everyone, let's start again. Everyone together. Okay. One, two, three, go. Rote huwe. La 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 la. Ate hessa. La 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 la. Asta huwa jo jayega. Wo mukadar ka sikandar Wo mukadar ka sikandar Jaane man kehlaye ga Jaane man kehlaye ga Jaane man kehlaye ga Jaane man kehlaye ga Special Oxford glasses Yes I thought that spending a summer evening discussing the future of the country that has had a glorious past and now looks to a promising future full of revolutions would be much more interesting than our social panting. Social panting? Panting. Oh, panting! Panting, yes. Stop teasing me with my French accent. It's my charm. 
Absolutely. 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 It is so delightful to see all of you assembled here and Professor Shackle. Cowboy Shackle, shall we say, but you can call me Jim. Jim. I insist that you call me Jim. You see, Sunita's letter, it uh, tempted me to bite the bullet, shall we say, and come here and get first hand information about the future of your country, India. But you know, I'm glad, Professor. I mean, I'm glad, Jim. Because uh, your experience will help us uh, disentangle the dark colonial web. Dark colonial yeah. web. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, but back, back to Elise. Yeah. Oh, you were saying, Elise. I spent some time in the library bonding up on the post-independence history of India. Much more exciting than a hamper basket. A hamper um, basket? Ham oh, a hamper, hamper basket. basket. Yes, a hamper uh, basket. English yes. language. Yes, you know, well, you might become a communist yourself. What do you say, John? If you get rid of a little bit of your cynicism. <laughs> but, uh, Elise, um, of course, genius has its flair for words, but why the cynicism about India? Do, 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 do you think it might have something to do with monody? Modern deep. Oh, oh, <laughs> I'm surprised that you have deconstructed cynicism in one clause. But you are partially right. I'm afraid that Monodip has returned to Calcutta for oh. good or bad. His parents found him a suitable match. Mm -hmm. The Bengali vegetarian virgin. <laughs> Bengali what? <laughs> vegetarian virgin. Vegetarian virgin. Oh, aristocratic <laughs> battle. Picture perfect. Oh, the match is thanks to his father, who, by the way, met his future daughter-in-law at Cambridge while she was studying for a master's in English. And not because she loves English literature, hmm. but because she knew it would fetch her a good Bengali match. Of course. Pure hypocrisy. <laughs> clever girl. No, clever parents. I hate Indians. Uh, you mean Indian men, Alice? Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Um, well, friends, uh, shall we get down to business? Yes, Please yes. help yourselves to some chair. We all chair. <laughs> well, <Cheers>. well. <laughs> um, may I request Sunita to fire the opening salvo, comrade? Thank you, Amit. Friends, Romans, comrades. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lend me your ears before Pilot Rajiv crashes Indian democracy. <laughs> so, uh, some time back, I wrote this letter to Amit because it's something uh, I feel, I mean, we feel very strongly about. I want to know, is dynasty the inevitable path for the future Prime Minister of India? Yeah! But... Shouldn't he be given a chance, just like every other Indian citizen? What? I mean, by reducing such a complex issue to this simplistic level, I must say you're just distorting perceptions. Rajiv Gandhi is anything but an ordinary Indian citizen because he stands in the way of change. Yeah, yeah. And why are we all gathered here? We are gathered here because we all know and all believe that he is the one who stands in the way of change. Uh, but Rajiv Gandhi is hope for many not lucky enough to be up here in Oxford. But, but for you, he represents a dynastic elitism. His elevation bodes ill for a young democracy. If dynasty survives, everything will be destroyed. Don't you think, however, it should be left to the voters of the Meiti to choose dynasty or not? Everything related to Rajiv Gandhi in the present system is bound to be undemocratic. Exactly. Exactly. Why is that so difficult to understand? Why? The media is in his right pocket. But can't that be thought on an ideological basis? Absolutely not. All the major newspapers are owned by industrialists and edited by their cohorts. Mrs. Gandhi, of course, follows Nehru's lines and thus the media minds its place. You know, we are talking about the future of a country here, where common people should be able to choose a candidate based on free choice. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And not some match fixed in the dressing room of some political hats. What do you mean? 
You mean Rajiv Gandhi should lose electorally to someone less well qualified than him? Only then will you consider democracy redeemed. Of course. Of course. No. Of course. Of course what? <laughs> Thanks. Ooh. As of now, India is not a democracy. No. <laughs> democracy is something else. To nurture people's government, we need to approve the status quo. Mm -hmm. Look at China! Which year? 1977. When CPM came to power in West Bengal. CPM came to power in West Bengal in 1977. All right, all right. And, and your Congress became a history in the state. We had our own cultural revolution by the student movement supported by the teaching fraternity, 1977. What good was the cultural revolution? The Chinese themselves regretted, though discreetly. West Bengal cannot become, and, and its universities cannot become the killing fields of Kampuchea, the collective farms and psychiatric wards of Soviet Russia, or the blood-soaked streets of Poland. Revolution! Hmm? the revolution. What revolution? The first notable achievement of CPIA government was the hospital strike. Mm. The disruptive skills of leftist trade unions and their philosophy of dismantling institutions are just amazing. All in the name of revolution. A new religion, CPIM, a new opiate of the masses. And by the end of its term in West Bengal, what will we see? Near insolvency and civil war. Is it with blood that you want to paint our country red? Uh, uh, Sunita, I, I, I understand your misgivings that uh, Middle class morality will never allow true social change in India. I understand it completely. You see, the Bengal famine was very soon forgotten because the urban bourgeoisie ever bourgeoisie. bourgeoisie. Merci, merci. The urban bourgeoisie, to very few in number, they were the actual decision makers and they remained unaffected by the famine. Thus, any unfortunate truth to them became a mere aberration. The elite in the middle class of India will never understand poverty because they're not affected by it. What do you say? Thank you. Thank I, you. I, I agree that there is a political elite in India and what you would call the economically deprived classes. But, and in Britain, Rajiv Gandhi does come from the ruling class, as do many of us. Let us pause here for a moment for perspective. Is it by accident that we all gathered here in Oxford? Did we make it here purely on merit, unconnected with our to-the-manner-born status in society? Come, some honest confessions are in order. For me, it was merit all the way. I graduated from a top-notch college, like three previous generations of my family. My father was called to the bar in England, but he chose to return to India for legal practice. Appointed judge at the High Court, retired as a Chief Justice, Without merit, we would have failed. So you believe you've made it thus far purely on merit? And getting admitted into that prestigious boarding school in the hills, was that on merit too? Do you think, do you honestly think, that any school or college in India can afford to refuse admission to the son of a sitting High Court judge? But many others did not make it. Oh. Come on, Rajiv, maybe not to Oxford. But I'm sure none of them are exactly starving. Well, mm. I yeah, I agree with the myth. I mean, uh, I beg your pardon, but <clears throat> these uh, schools and colleges in India were only implementing Macaulay's theory of, of how to um, educate the elite of the British Empire. And your uh, communist leaders, most of them studied these very same schools and colleges. They belong to the feudal caste. I mean, they can be um, intellectually Marxist, but they hardly live in a classless society. What do you say, Sunita? Exactly. Most of the communist leaders and the congress leaders belong to the same class. There you are, there you are. Of course, uh, 33 years after independence, most Indians can't even dream of getting their children admitted into any such school. What, what must be the annual intake of each such school that we're talking about? Not more than a hundred. Surely in the whole of India, so few children cannot be meritorious. But all those good schools, including them, they all admit children from the less privileged section of the but society. But John, how many? How many? Uh, less than a dozen, sir. That's ridiculous. 
In a decent and good democracy, every child should be guaranteed an equal education. That's what happens in UK. Yep. Excuse me, Jim, but I don't think you uh, really understand the complexities of Indian social reality. I'm sorry, but it's too convoluted even for a scholar of your standing. Besides class and identity and in such as misplaced nationalism now, of course, a synonym of Hindu communalism, are the gifts of British divide and rule policy. Sunita, my, my dear Sunita, in spite of the rigors of a Cambridge training, you have a habit of oversimplifying very complicated social issues to suit your ideology. Am I wrong in saying that the upper class of India have to resort to double standards to main their self, maintain their self-esteem in a very difficult moral territory? You Indian man, you might be talking about politics, but you have only one thing in your head. You are worse than the French. And here in this room, you are other a prude, a virgin, an impotent, or a future rapist. Can't you understand that the real revolution in this country will start for the woman, with the woman, and by the woman? You have to start respecting the woman and to stop killing baby girls. I mean, look in this room. The most interesting one and the most powerful one is a woman, Shumiza. Remember that. And I will not disclose what Monudip told me about his notion of chastity. He tried it on me. I kicked him away. Any French psychiatrist would go to Looney Boon if I was going to narrate him all this. Dear Ahmed, so as you know, Prem and I plan to return to India in a few months' time to get married India. and settle down in the respective them. professions. This Come will be the best way of realizing our dreams of a proletarian revolution, a movement more powerful than the one for freedom. India needs another revolution and in the chain scenario. Oxbridge is just an oasis. Our Karma Bhumi should be India. It is upon us to carry forward the great legacy of Marx and Engels, embellished further by him. Because of them, our beloved red flag flutters gloriously over one third of the world today. It would be no exaggeration to say that it is due to Marxist revolutions that colonization had, has waned and our motherland breathes the fresh air of democracy. Zindagi kaisi hai paheli haa Kabhi hai saa, kabhi hai rula Reducing such complex sociological facts into simple mathematical equations will not do, Jim. Sociology itself is dictated by politics, which in a democracy is ultimately a complex game of numbers. See, it's, it's all about arithmetic, if not about other branches of mathematics. So some political facts may appear simple, but simplistic analysis will only make for confusion. Am I making any sense? Yes. I'm sorry, Professor Jim. I think uh, I agree with Sunita, and I think you're terribly mistaken. I understand your love for Kima Samosas. <laughs> yeah. I respect your interest in India's democracy, you being a professor of modern Indian history at Oxford. However, Outsiders are incapable of understanding the intricacies and complexities of our system. You would inevitably lose your way to superficialities and end up making unacceptable judgments. Professor Jim, am I making sense? Yes. Anyhow, we are here to discuss Rajiv Gandhi choosing to join politics to help his mother. Oui, oui. Amity has been meticulously nurtured by the Gandhi family so that anyone from the clan can win an election from there. Winning Amity is no generation statement, surely. What statement? It's just a perpetuation of the system we are fed up with. Amit, Amit, is this a final decision? Rajiv Gandhi is going to contest from the Sita's late brother, Hemp. There you go. 
You talk about making a statement. Don't you think that the presence in this room solely of the alumni of JNU, Stevens and Presidency College, reeks of dynastic elitism? Think of it, 690 million Indians and only a chosen few, half a dozen, from JNU, from Stevens, from Presidency, are sitting here talking about Rajiv Gandhi. Am I the only one who finds this in Congress? No. Okay, so let's talk about this system here. Who exactly is to be blamed? Those who have been ruling all along? Just tell me, where has the system got us in the last 30 years? Where should we have been? In search of some purposeless alternative. Anywhere but where we are, despite who we are. The emergency is behind us. India is forging ahead. Didn't people want this all along? This is what we wanted all along. I, I cannot understand why Mrs. Gandhi chooses to surround herself with mediocre people. Particularly since her return to power, she has developed a great appetite for sycophancy. Most of the people around her are Jokers come brokers. Yes. They can easily convince her to the validity of any moral scheme. Come, come, how can you say that? And surely, you mean a moral scheme. I'm sorry, you know how much I like and respect Mrs. Gandhi, but I cannot abide the thought of her keeping the company of such charlatans. Because of these bird brine characters, Congress Party has little ideological base left. A slow dismantling has begun. Sad that great Gandhi family has become one of the favorite topic for gossip columns and cocktail party cubes. Uh, surely it could have been prevented? What gossip indeed. We will be reduced to a nation of mean thoughts. But do you believe that someone like Mohit Sen could ever be a sycophant? Of course not. But you know that he has been completely marginalized in the Communist Party and accused of being a camp follower of Mrs. Gandhi? Mohinda is perhaps the only soul who has genuine affection for Mrs. Gandhi as Nehru had for him. The last of the left-wing bonds between the Congress leaders and the communists. But because of Mrs. Gandhi's inexplicable influence on the CPI, it's rapidly losing its ideological integrity and mass base. Ultimately, it will come down like a house of cards. Well, it does have a lot to thank her for. But who exactly is your concern? Mrs. Gandhi or her son Rajiv? Both, frankly, both of them. But the unfortunate part is that people close to Rajiv Gandhi who style themselves as his close friends will mar Nehru's foreign policy. To Mrs. Gandhi's credit, she never could be trapped by capitalism, so she kept her self-seeking industrialism and American schemes in check. So John, keep the faith, keep the faith. She will not allow her legacy to be wasted. Wasted, Professor? <laughs> Look at Rajiv Gandhi's circle. Like those who are responsible for the troubles of Sanjay Gandhi will deliver this country to capitalism. Now, oh, as of Mrs. Gandhi, the attempts to con convince her to a, the attempts to convince her to play another dynastic trump card is nothing but that political strategy. Even if one were to agree with you, consider, please consider, why have the people of India reverted to Mrs. Gandhi so quickly after the emergency? Surely, it is a recognition of true democracy, freed from spurious propaganda. So, what do we make of what lies ahead? On the road to Maruti Private Limited? Babus from Bengal, anyone? <laughs> Don't be sarcastic, Amit. Don't. There's a big conspiracy here afoot by the multinationals. Did Sanjay Gandhi really think Maruti would lead to an indigenous automobile revolution for the emerging middle class India? You think we are bloody fools? 
the vicious vice of capitalism spares now. Yeah! Vicious virus of capitalism spares none! Gentlemen, I must confess I am stumped by the level of this discussion. Do you have any idea what you want from life? You appear to reject everything from the right to the left. Do you have any idea what you want from life? Who does? But Ahmed, I'm really glad that at least you have the guts to say what you believe in. <laughs> well, let me tell you, this is only possible in an Oxford room. Because if you plan to enter the den of Congress politics, you must first bid goodbye to your free thinking. <laughs> um, will you turn communist if uh, Rajiv Gandhi is swayed by capitalism and abandons Nehruvian socialism? We really wish that Rajiv Gandhi remains a custodian of Nehruvian socialism. And if that happens, what will you do? Well, I shall be happy to work for him helplessly. <laughs> I shall be happy to work for him selflessly in the Congress tradition and convince Rajiv Gandhi to build a grand memorial for C. N. Roy and Dehradun, where there is no sign left of the great visionary. M. N. Roy. Yep. Yes, M. N. Roy. Here, 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 here. You know, honestly, I am just beginning to wonder if it's even worth going back now. There's no point just settling down to teach. The peasants will not see their life change. Prem and I plan to return to India, get married, but also pursue the dream of a proletarian revolution. Oxbridge is just an oasis where we sought respite, but all that I'm talking about is not possible unless the Marxists adhere to the dynamics of dialectics without digressing in the name of interpretation. Ooh. Am I making any sense? Yes. Thanks, Rajiv. I should not. Acha, tell me something, Amito. Mm. I mean, would you still like to return to the motherland? You have no chance of becoming prime minister now that Rajiv Gandhi is all set to enter politics. <laughs> <laughs> what an irony, though, that a pilot should become our prime minister. But. Why that's a disqualification? He might not win, of course, of course. It's not a disqualification. And how do you think that he's going to win? Many a slip between a cup and the lip. Precisely. It's a pity, Sunita, that you still think that the uh, battle is between the legacy and the lal salah. I'm afraid it will be Gandhi versus God says ghost. Mm. God say. Whatever you say. <laughs> Stop distracting, Tata. There are no alibis anymore. We know there's no, there's no hope. We all know it's all planned. We have to end dynastic rule and free ourselves now. Yeah. And you know, this is not possible without total revolution as visualized by Trotsky. This is not possible without total revolution as visualized by Trotsky. Come on, yeah. come on, he's a Cambridge man. And in many ways, appears to challenge his class aspirations naturally. He just needs to be advised wisely. Starting with reading his grandfather's See, writing. Dynasty again. Nehru's writings. <laughs> instead of landing in here to some <coughs> opportunistic academy or a smart social climber, or what do you call that, uh, some spurious expert. But uh, Abdabu, you're trying to say that if people like you help him, Rajiv Gandhi can actually carry on the Nehru legacy? Uh, yes, legacy and legitimacy. That's, uh, that's, uh, uh, that's India's... Uh, tradition, uh, tradition. Yeah. Oh, but there are good tradition and bad tradition in India. Maybe, mm. but it's our job to separate the grain, the grain from the chaff. Uh, you know, Rajiv Gandhi is a part of the discovery of India. It is important that we support him. Then there's no hope. Comrades, we may debate ad nauseum, but in a society controlled by the bourgeoisie, promoting come on. Look, I need to need to just read this out. <laughs> but you said bourgeoisie very well. Uh, thanks, Alice. 
In a society controlled by the bourgeoisie promoting commodity <coughs> fetishism, the modes of production confined to the capitalist class antagonism essential for an uprising is undermined by reactionary socialism, our dialectical materialism, the people's revolutions is destined to remain an unfinished story for another generation. Does that make any sense? No. You mean, until another generation comes up to Oxford, what on earth is the matter with you, Sunita? Do these grandiloquent phrases signify anything to our common citizenry, or are they just meant to confound the company here? You know, Amit, they say that it's better to keep your mouth shut and appear stupid than to open it and remove all doubt. I must confess those words have just gone through my head. But is that a confession or an allegation? <laughs> well, why do you waste your time on these jacques of Delhi, assuming that Rajiv Gandhi can succumb to the desire? He might well prove his detractors wrong. And what if he does? Then, then Rajiv, excuse the pun. <laughs> the sun will rise over India again. Another pun. <laughs> <laughs> and it's revolution denied. Now that Marx, Lenin, and Trotsky all have gone to the great pub in the sky, John Lennon, I'm sorry, John Samuel is going to join the party. <laughs> if we don't yes. leave now, we might miss the last orders. <laughs> oh, oh. There's no good malady that a good bitter can't cure. Cheers! 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 Cheers. Cheers the midsummer madness! Cheers! Cheers! Cheers the revolution! Cheers! I'm getting elected in the morning. Ding dong, the hammer and sickle's gonna chime. Pull out the stopper, make me a whopper, but get me to the communal farm. So jayenge Raja Rank Fakir Oh ye dunia Ye dunia pittal di Oh ye dunia pittal di Oh baby doll me sone di Oh baby doll me sone di Oh ye dunia Hamosh, oh ye dunia, ye dunia pittal di, oh ye dunia pittal di, oh baby doll me so neti, 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 oh ye dunia, oh ye dunia, oh ye dunia, oh ye dunia pittal di. Oh baby doll, I'm so needy. Oh baby doll, I'm so needy. Oh, Kabira se kanika. Na, Sant se sani tak. You are wonderful. But you know, Jim, it was thanks to you that we were able to ask those questions and give the somewhat difficult answers. My dear friend, once again, you're underestimating yourself. You are blessed to live in a country where questions are still asked and answers are still questioned, even though some of those answers are extremely difficult. Let me ek baat pata hai. Aapki nazar mein Rajiv Gandhi kaise pradhan mantri the? He was great, very great. But our madam is also great. Madam? Madam Sonia Ji Gandhi, she is a true leader. She knows what sacrifices. We are between friends. Do not be afraid of Amit Sahib. 
Tell us what you really think. हाँ लटनिया बताइए बताइए ये कोई हिंदुस्तानी जर्नलिस्ट तो नहीं है कि आपकी बात सीधा सोनिया जी तक पहुंचाएंगे Rajiv ji was great. He was very great. But we lost him too soon. Otherwise? Otherwise? Otherwise you can ask Sonia ji. <clears throat> you must uh, understand we indians are very reticent when it comes to talking about elders and leaders but you can <laughs> there is a lot that why people nowadays the sort of suffering well uh, the life of our nation appears to be stuck in colors saffron green red blue but on a more serious note in india the liberals have been their own worst enemy we allowed the left to undermine us and now our myopia has delivered the country into the hands of a misplaced majoritarianism so you uh, you think this rising swell is here to stay well I can't say how long but clearly times ahead are tough I mean what happened I mean what went so wrong a slow poisoning of congress and the electorate a new india wanted to write its own story and we were slow in coming up with materials you know Jim in history edifices collapse after peaking we delivered a remarkable rights based government but we were unable to explain away a few exaggerated mistakes but it's not too late mm, i'm never too late but we appear to be going over the same ground over and over again some actors change but the script remains the same mm. and sometimes the defense rests its case too early so i have come to India at exactly the right time to finally find some answers to those questions we asked so long ago in Oxford <laughs> and to uh, watch the champion of liberty fight the final battle <laughs> well the battle lines are obviously drawn all over the country and into the future but i i think it was our success which was ultimately our greatest enemy if we could just step back to that evening in Oxford all those years ago we would see that everything that needed to be done has indeed been done look at the gdp we delivered the fdi india's global reach we even managed to beat japan by one major economic indicator we managed to beat japan to become the world's third largest economy did we get credit for all that well your social sector achievements are not small but communication didn't match or did you lose your nerve mm. we have to now learn how to live with this new india that we created uh, you know revolutions devour their own progenitors maybe the aspirational revolution that we created is in the process of devouring us but my dear dear friend don't lose hope do not lose hope <laughs> I still believe that people still believe in the Gandhian dream. I believe that the phoenix will once again rise up from the ashes. Inshallah. 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 And now I have a title for my next book, India, the Phoenix, the Rise of a New Nation. <laughs> And now I have a title for my next book. the phoenix and the monster ooh ooh the phoenix and the monster <sighs> ladan mian ji zara aap wo music on kijiyega M- music uh professor 
I would really want you to listen to this rendering by Rafi of one of my favorite garlic ghazals. This is... Ghal? Mm -hmm. A ghazal by Ghal? Let us hear it. Okay. Let us hear it. I think the left and the right can now join hands. <laughs> now, if you'll allow this Angraves to introduce this amazing team, Sunita, does a foreigner have the permission to introduce? <clears throat> on the extreme right, even though they should be on the extreme left, we have Anuj, spelled with a Y, playing Bobby. We have Adia, who, not by chance, is wearing a red shirt, playing John Samuel, not John Lennon, John Samuel. And this very beautiful Mademoiselle from Gay Paris, Marianne as Alice. Rajiv Ranjan Jaw, <laughs> with a very stiff upper jaw. <laughs> Played by Akshay. The light of the world who blows kisses to all and sundry. Salim Javed as Aftab Alam. And the silent painter, the very faithful husband to be, we have Sahil as Pray. Ah. To say anything in front of her is extremely dangerous, but I shall try to anyways. We have Kirti as Sunita. And we have my very, very dear friend Chandramon Khanna as Ladnan Mia. And last but far from least, and he should not be on the left, he should be somewhere in the center. We have Vivek as Amit. We have Tom Alter. Chandar and I go back 43 years. Even before that evening in Oxford, we joined the Film Institute together in 1970, not 1872. <laughs> the Film Institute was not on strike in 1870, not even started in 1872. In 1972, we joined the Film Institute together. Chandra, you are absolutely fantastic. <laughs> on the lights, we have Vijay. <laughs> Charu on the sound. And if I'm not mistaken, we have the handsome young man who has written this play. Where is Atar Faruqi Saab? Please come on stage. Atar Faruqi Saab. Thank you. 
And as you know, this was based on a concept by Salman Khurshid, who right now has many more important things to do than watch plays that he has conceived. He has to look after a party that he helped conceive and helped carry on. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been an amazing evening. And as we said, sir, this play sir, is... Somebody has directed this play? I don't know <laughs> who in the world. Did it look like anyone had directed this play? Uh, Tom, I think uh, Tom Walter is the guilty. Oh, okay. Nawazish, Nawazish, Nawazish. <laughs> and as we said, this play is dedicated to that midsummer night's dream that is, was, and always will be India. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for being here. Just one last announcement. Uh, the winner of today's Godrej Hamper Lucky Draw is Mr. Yashraj Malik. Sir, are you here? <laughs> sir, please collect the voucher from here. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for being here. I'm, I'm you. also here. <laughs> you all are, sir. We have with us some very distinguished gentlemen who are very much part of the future and the past and the present of India, I'd like to call Manishankar Ayer, sir, and Shashi Tharoor Saab on stage. At least stand up, you two handsome gentlemen, please. Thank you very much. Thank you, friends. Thank you very, very much. There is another play here day after tomorrow, again presented by Piro's Troupe, written, produced, and directed by Dr. M. Saeed Alam. It's got nothing to do with the modern Indian politics, but a great, to do, great deal to do with India of a long time ago. The play is called Ghalib, based on the life and times of somebody we all know very, very well, Mirza Ghalib. Day after tomorrow, 7.30, right here in Sri Ram Center. If you can make it, we will be delighted. Thank you very, very much. And Piro's Troupe, Dr. Alam, the entire team from Piro's Troupe, thank you very, very much. Thank you. All the best. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.